Welcome to Lifespan News, your source for longevity science updates. I'm your host, Brent Nally. If you missed our last episode, then you can watch it by clicking the card above. We encourage you to check the description below for links to these stories. Thank you for everyone who joined us for Lifespan.io's 2020 Ending Age Related Diseases Conference on August 20th and 21st. Originally planned as an in-person event, we moved the conference online due to COVID-19. We brought together over 50 longevity leading experts, including Aubrey de Grey, Judy Campisi, Brian Kennedy, and Steve Horvath. Huge thanks to everyone who helped make this event awesome. If you couldn't attend, don't worry. Recordings of the events will be made publicly available in a few months' time. Nature Aging is a recently founded spinoff of the popular scientific journal Nature. In a recent tweet, Nature Aging shared infographics from the Center for Disease Control pointing out the hospitalization and death rates linked to COVID-19 of different age brackets compared to people between 18 and 29 years of age. While teenagers and children have lower rates of death and hospitalization linked to COVID-19, all other brackets have higher hospitalization and death rates. In particular, people aged 75 to 84 have a 220 times higher death rate while people aged 85 and above have a 630 times higher death rate. This, of course, is no huge surprise to aging experts because the immune system is crucial to fighting all communicable diseases. So while it's scientifically been well established for decades that immune function degrades in humans as we grow older, COVID-19 is educating a more general population about this fact, as well as the impacts that this has on our overall global society. Nature Aging emphasizes how these data indicate an urgent need to invest in research to better understand the core biology of human aging and how to increase our health span. There's good news for those who suffer from oral herpes. Herpes simplex virus 1, or HSV, is a latent virus, meaning that the virus cycles through active and dormancy phases. Even when HSV is dormant, HSV DNA remains in the host cells and is able to reactivate months, perhaps years later, under certain trigger conditions. Latent viruses such as HSV are suspected to play a role in the burdening of the immune system observed during aging. Most treatments for HSV focus on alleviation of symptoms, but researchers at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center attempted to find a way to attack the cause. Using a gene editing tool, the researchers managed to, quote, edit out end quote, the HSV genome from infected mice, eliminating over 90% of latent HSV from the tissues where it resided. This therapy was much more effective than previously attempted ones, and it just might pave the way toward an HSV cure in humans. Now wouldn't that be nice? For our next story, the thymus is a small gland located behind your collarbone, and it's responsible for the training of new T cells for your immune system. As we age, the thymus shrinks and turns into fat tissue. Reversing this process is extremely important in the fight against immunosenescence, which accompanies aging. A small human study led by Dr. Greg Fay in 2019 showed that this reversal may be possible, but there may be more efficient ways to achieve this result. Thymic involution results from the decreased expression of a factor called FOXN1 in the cells of the thymus. In a new study, researchers tried to counteract this process by implanting cells reprogrammed to express more FOXN1 in the thymi of aged mice. This resulted in increased regrowth of the thymi and improvement of their function. So to clearly summarize, the researchers are not stating that this FOXN1 strategy works in humans because it hasn't been tried yet. Rather, they suggest this FOXN1 strategy might work in humans, as they always do. Moving on. In collaboration with Insilico Medicine, researchers from Johns Hopkins University have discovered a new pathway implicated in bladder cancer. Insilico Medicine is a company focused on AI techniques for pharmaceutical research and development. In this research, the team discovered that a protein named GULP1 regulates a pathway called KEAP1-NRF2. Knocking down the gene that encodes the protein affects the pathway and leads to tumor cell proliferation in vitro and promotes tumor growth in mice. According to Insilico Medicine CEO Alex Javronkov, targeting this pathway for therapeutic purposes is challenging, but the company will continue to employ its AI arsenal to identify and validate potentially useful compounds. For our final story, on August 28, 2020, Elon Musk livestreamed a presentation followed by Q&A on Neuralink's YouTube channel. 
Elon shared updates about their brain-computer interface, or BCI tech, called Neuralink. During this live stream, Elon discussed how, quote, almost everyone has neurological problems over time, so we need a generalized brain device that is reliable and affordable, end quote. If you would also like to watch this Neuralink presentation and Q&A, then you can click on the card above, and you can also check for a link in the description below. Personally, I believe that Neuralink is a step in the right direction to potentially help many people suffering from many different diseases and ailments. However, as usual, let's keep in mind that Neuralink is currently in the very beginning of this technology, and it may take many years to potentially see any types of positive impacts on human health. To give you an idea of how early stage the Neuralink project still is, Elon Musk says that they currently have about 100 employees and hope to one day have over 10,000 if the project continues to be successful. Their employees are made up of mainly neuroscientists and engineers from software, mechanical, and electrical engineers. Also on August 28, 2020, Elon Musk's wealth surpassed $100 billion for the first time, making him the third wealthiest person on the planet, according to Forbes. So it's nice to see one of the world's wealthiest people using his power and influence and entrepreneurial skill set to potentially increase our health span and lifespan and help people who are suffering from debilitating ailments who previously had no options. Stay tuned because the future may be a lot weirder than you thought. All right, so that's all the news. As usual, the simple, quick, and free things that you can do to help support us on our mission is to like if you haven't already yet, Make sure you share this video on social media. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't already, make sure that you're subscribed. You have the notification bell clicked to all notifications. Thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you in the next video, at least as healthy as you are now.